Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to go through how I made my Miss the Moon Bear Cub. And she will be available in my shop on my website, creaturesofnat.com. So if she has already been up, uh, adopted, then head to my shop and you can find her there. So for this little doll, I started off making my own eyes and I just used some glass cabochons and some raw umber chrome acryl paint and also some black nail polish for the pupil area. I find the black nail polish works really well for me just because I can, um, it, it, it's pretty solid, it dries hard and it doesn't mess with my molds or my resin or anything. And I just coat the uh, back of the cabochon liberally with some of that nail polish and then wait for that to dry. I'll then go back in and colour in the little iris area. So however big you wanted the pupil to be, uh, you will have the iris area left over and you can colour it whatever colour you want. But I went for the raw umber in this particular doll. So I'll go through the backstory of Mimus. Moon bears are considered somewhat of a legendary creature as they are quite rare. It has been years since a cub was born, and such an event has been celebrated by the locals. The markings on their snout symbolise their age. Cubs tend to only have one or two markings, while the patterns on their coats are much like our own fingerprints, each individual to one bear. They are nocturnal creatures, spending most of their day sleeping in the cave only to be come out at night. They say their strength comes from the moon's gravitational pull and is strongest when there is a full moon. Moon bears are found in the highest point of the mainland Nankandara in the Alpine region. So there's a little backstory. Alright, so what I've done so far is I've made that resin cast with those glass eyes that we created at the start. I will have a casting glass eye tutorial that will be a paid tutorial. It will be available in my shop soon. I'm working on it. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm just going through and I'm priming my resin pieces, the bits that are going to be painted. Uh, I do have a priming video coming up too, so I will tell you all about the primer that I use and stuff in that video. But I don't prime the whole doll, it's a waste of paint, um, especially if uh, most of it's going to be covered in fur. So I only prime the parts that are going to be painted. And you need to prime just so the paint has something to stick to because resin is quite slippery. So once that primer is dry, I'll then go again in with my chromacryl acrylic paints in a color black and I'll just go around the eyes, nose and mouth in that black color. You can use any color that you want. If you want a purple snout, then paint it purple. But this particular doll will have a black face. So I tend to cover all of that white resin with some black paint. So when I fur it, none of that uh, white resin will show through on the, um, through the fur. And you don't have to be too uh, careful with your paint job if you're going to cover it with fur. So you can be a little bit sloppy, it makes the job go quicker and it's going to be covered in fur anyway. So uh, there's no need to be too pedantic about it. And the same deal with the claws. So. The, all of these pieces were something that I have um, sculpted, molded in silicon and then cast in resin and I should have all those videos on my channel so just go back and have a look. And I'm doing the same deal with that same black chrome acryl paint and I am just painting the whole um, paw that time so I'm going to cover it with fur anyway. So this is the fur that I'm going to be using. It, uh, this is the very last of this fur that I have. So when this is gone that's it. No more dolls with this fur unless I can find it again which is fat chance. <laughs> Uh, so um, I'm going to be using this entire fur for the whole of the body and you can see how I have uh, drawn out my patterns on the back of the fur and then I'll cut it out with a small pair of sharp scissors, uh, pin it together, fur side together and I'll go ahead and sew it up on the sewing machine. I don't really like hot gluing things, I don't like the way the seams turn out and um, how it feels under the fur so I prefer to sew things as well and it also makes it a lot stronger than hand sewing things. So this is what I have after I've sewn up the doll. So I've left the back end open uh, so I can flip it the right way around. But because this doll is quite big and um, I can um, actually sew both sides of the legs up and I can actually flip it through. So there's no eternal struggle to get that flipped through. So once I've done that, this is what it looks like. And now I don't have to sew up those two front legs, which is always a beauty because I hate hand sewing things. And this doll will have a plastic ball and socket armature. So I will insert that and because I've already cast that ball and socket 
when I was casting the resin so I don't need to attach anything it's already attached because the ball and socket armatures pop together um, I don't have to attach anything so all I need to do is insert it through the body so if you want a video on any information about that ball and socket armature just let me know in, in the comments or any questions you have about it and I'll try and make a video on it as well so give you guys a bit more understanding about them all right, so as those front legs are sewn up, uh, I can go ahead and just glue those um, onto the resin pieces. So I use a fabric glue from a local store here called Spotlight in Australia, but you can find any craft glue. Um, just search on the bottle. It should say it's good for fabrics and plastics uh, like this one is, and the fur adheres really well to the resin with this particular glue. So I usually stick the front uh, legs together and the head and neck area together first and then I'll stuff it with polyfill uh, which is the same sort of stuff that you put in your cushions. I also have a video on what I stuff my dolls with so you can check that out in my materials 101 playlist. And then when I've done that I sew it all up and I attach the fur to the face. Um, so here's what we have after I have attached it and trimmed it. I'll add a few markings here or there. Um, I have made this bear in the past in a small version but I've never made like a big cub before so I wanted to do something a little different with this one. I also went ahead and made some ears uh, with some uh, sewing and gluing and then trimming it and this is the little one that we have now. So like I said at the start, she will be available in my shop, on my website. I also have a couple of other dolls on there looking for homes. So if you want to order for Christmas, do so now so it gets there in time. But that is it for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. If you have any video requests, you can leave them in the comments down below. You can also check me out on Instagram and Facebook at Creatures of Night. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye!